Rank and File is a cultural history project. It was developed as part of Cinema Diverse, the Palm Springs LGBTQ Film Festival, and its goal is to allow people born between 1925 and 1964 an opportunity to tell their stories. These people, our elders, experience the biggest shift in attitudes and acceptance of homosexuals of any two generations in recorded history. These are the people who survived and who even thrived at times when throughout the world homosexuals were persecuted, their lives were threatened, and they were even killed in many instances. We want them to tell their stories. We want to remember their stories lest we forget. The biggest danger of forgetting history is that it gets repeated. We at Cinema Diverse believe it's critical for us to hear the stories of our own elders in their words. To that end, we present Rank and File. I have always been attracted to, to men, uh, but I've also been attracted to women. I'm not sexually attracted to women. I say I was born near Paris, Texas, and I grew up in Lubbock, Texas, in West Texas, and of course uh, the word gay didn't exist back in the uh, late 50s when I was turned 18 and was getting interested in men. I did have one experience with the boys going to Mexico to a prostitute, and it was not fun. It was, uh, I did what I was supposed to do, but I didn't enjoy it. And I tell people, it, to make it funny, uh, that here we are in her bedroom, this little Mexican girl, cute girl, which was trying to make money to get, probably get out of Mexico. And so we're doing the, the, the deed, and I look up, and there is Jesus on the cross looking down at the bed. And I thought, that is a sign that I'm doing the wrong thing. <laughs> if you had told me that uh, 10 years ago that I would be wearing this, I would have said, you're crazy. I'm never going to get married. But I did. I'm happy. It is, I, and I, it is so funny to start saying, my husband, that is a word that it's like, for the first year, it, it's been difficult for me to say, I keep wanting to say my, my partner or my boyfriend, and, and <laughs> but no, it's, it's my husband. I grew up in a small town outside of Worcester, in the 50s, basically. I remember being questioning about what homosexuality was. In the eighth grade, I was like 12. And so I went to the library in my little small town and looked up homosexuality. And I found Freud. And Freud said you would outgrow it. So I stopped worrying about it. <laughs> <laughs> and I met a woman where I worked. We were both doing the same thing, community organizers. and. Uh, we just realized that we were meant to be together, and eventually we did. She was unfortunately married and had two children, probably not atypical of our time. And uh, we were dating for about a year in secret, and then she divorced, and we moved in together with the two children and lived a very closeted life. When I was working for F.A.O. Schwarz, went to San Francisco, which was the home office. And my sweetie came out after the meetings, and we walked down Castro Street and we could hold hands. And that was just incredible. When I moved to California, I felt very comfortable being out as a lesbian. When I went to work, I wasn't worried about letting people know. I couldn't get fired. Whereas where I was in Oklahoma, it was bye-bye. There's a movie called uh, On These Shoulders We Stand, and that's kind of what it's about. You, if you know your history, you know who came before you that helped you get where you are now. My friends who've been together, some of them 30, 40 years, and they said getting married kind of changed how they saw things. They felt different. And that's probably the biggest thing for me, even though I'm not married, that I see for our community. It 
that I came out pretty young um, because when I was in just out of high school, probably going to college, I started going out and I met people. And of course, at that time, at my age, it wasn't so great to be out. And although we had places to go, and I was in the business field and I was in a very successful business. So at the time, uh, I found ways to not be out and I actually got married and had children. You know, my marriage lasted a while and I eventually just had to say, hey, this isn't working, it isn't fair to either of us and not to mention the kids. And I came out again, so it was a second coming out for me. I don't think it ever occurred to me that I would marry a man I had been married to a woman before, and the idea of marriage, I just don't think it ever crossed my mind because two men didn't get married, so you never read about it, you never heard about it. You certainly never saw any role models, and I met a really great guy who I fell head over heels for, and uh, we've been together over 20 years, 22 years, and actually we finally got married. We had to go to New York to do it because uh, California wouldn't let us. Uh, it'll be five years ago in November. The thing that strikes me about gay men, in particular gay white men, is how prejudiced many of them are. And I find that troubling. Because if we're prejudiced, it'll carry on. And I think that's a real problem in the gay community. You don't see a lot of racial integration, um, and you do see a lot of prejudice. It's, it amazes me. Well, the community is, needs to integrate itself. Gay people don't need to be living in, although I came to Palm Springs, I guess, to live in one of the world's largest gay ghettos. I don't think gay people, and young gay people in particular, want to live in ghettos. They want to live like everybody else, and the rest of the world needs to recognize them. I fell in love with Bill Bixby on The Courtship of Eddie's Father, <laughs> and I don't remember what year that was. Um, but I remember him reading the paper all the time with his glasses and he just was adorable and maybe I wished he was my father, I don't know. <laughs> I began experimenting and exploring what my sexuality was all about or what I was trying to figure out at the age of 11, which opened up my world in a way it probably shouldn't have at that age, but. I, I was a curious kid. I wished I wasn't that young because I look at 11 year olds and I go, wow, what was that? And why was I doing that? I was um, labeled and marked as a little young boy because of the way I was and, and the things that I didn't do like hockey and baseball and football and tackle and fight and all those things. And I think I was called gay and faggot before I ever knew what the words meant. When I realized that people were calling me names that I didn't understand, obviously I tried to figure those words out. And around 11 I figured out that that's what it meant, that I was actually gay, I was actually that word. I, I work a lot to accept myself more and believe in myself more. And I also work with others. I work with children to help them believe in themselves at the ages where I didn't know how to. That helps me a lot. Kids are much more outgoing and much more open to being honest about their sexuality and their feelings because I work with the kids in the high schools about anti-bullying and teen suicide prevention. Because of what I felt as a kid, I always wanted to do that. And now it's, you know, 44 years later from when I first started to realize what gay meant. And I live in a little gay mecca that makes it very comfortable for me to be myself, but I still realize when I go outside of this mecca, unless I'm going to one of the other few in the world or the country, it's very different and I feel different, and I act maybe different, and I hold back like holding a hand if I would do it here. I don't necessarily always feel comfortable wherever else I might be.
I waited a long time. I was pretty sure my parents weren't going to accept me. And at 24, I came home for Christmas. I decided I absolutely had to, to be honest with them finally. Uh, I told them uh, that I was gay. I answered, I don't know, the, the five basic questions that everybody gets. Uh, you know, was I an overprotective mother? Is that why you're gay? And a couple other things like that. And then my parents dismissed themselves, uh, came back into the room uh, and said, uh, well, we're very moved by your honesty. We're, we, we're sure this must have been very hard for you. Um, you know, we have something that we've been meaning to be honest with you about, and this seems like a reason to do so. Um, so your father actually has two previous marriages, and you have two half-brothers. I think kids today can't imagine uh, choosing for example, to not talk about a divorce with a child. I, I think that, uh, that everyone thinks a divorce is now an ordinary thing, sort of like, well, I'm, I'm going you know, to change pants today. One of the things that I would like young people today who are LGBT to think about is that a lot of the way we got here is by being willing to say, and, and bravely, and, and sometimes at great risk to ourselves, I am different, that is okay. And one of the things that is a constant concern for me is, to be honest, assimilation. Uh, I was very proud to be different once I came to terms within myself about who I am. And what I found is once I walked through that, that passage, I came out the other side, uh, you know, I'm a, a brave and fierce soul, and I think that's a great thing that all of our differences give us, e even if you're not LGBT. We, we are, it is our differences that make us who we are.